Hey guys, welcome back to the edit place and today we're talking about the Canon C500 Mark II. Now if you're a Canon cinema nerd then you've probably been super stoked about this camera. Maybe not everyone's stoked about the $16,000 price point, but hey, we're talking about cinema cameras that's plenty in the budget friendly realm still. And so I was able to find a couple sample clips of both the raw light and the ProRes 4K. And so I just wanted to take a quick look and give you kind of my first impressions from a editor's perspective on how I feel about uh, seeing this footage for the first time. Now, right before I jump into the edit, of course, I need to give credit where credit is due. This footage comes from uh, YM Cinema Magazine. And more specifically, the uh, shooter here is Coro Films. They made these two clips available to download. So I'll definitely leave this link down in the description below so you guys can check it out and play with the footage as well. We essentially have two clips here. One is basically a very simple pan down to this beautiful uh, tree and scenery on this lake here. Uh, and this is filmed in raw light 5.9K. And here we have a handful of put together clips that are ungraded, and these are uh, ProRes 4K ungraded clips. So we'll kind of just go through here and uh, see what all the fuss is about. Actually first, instead of getting one clip, I'm actually gonna use scene detection, which we've talked about before. I wanna be able to get the different clips out of here. Cool, so now we got a bunch of separate clips there. On the article, they were also nice to list out some of the specs. So when we're looking at this first clip here of the tree, uh, we can see that again, it was shot in 5.9K cinema raw light. Uh, it is 12 bit raw light, daylight balance, Canon C-Log 2, which I believe I looked up and at C-Log 2 at 800 is when the camera has its most dynamic range at 15 plus stops. If you shoot C-Log 3, then you have 14 stops of dynamic range. So right off the bat, I can say that I can definitely tell the incredible dynamic range of this. Obviously, this is raw and ungraded, and everything from the shadows back here to these highlights, I mean, nothing is remotely clipped. If we go to color here, bring up some scopes. Yeah, we can see we have so much data and so much room to play with here. It's not even funny. If I go in, let's see what sort of raw controls we have here. I've actually never, that's interesting. I've actually never worked with uh, Canon raw light. Well, I think I figured out what makes it light is you don't have access to every raw control. Uh, the one that stands out most is ISO. So unlike my Blackmagic, pocket series or really any black magic camera currently when shooting raw in post-production you can change the iso to pretty much anything within that iso range so if you're on the pocket series then there's essentially two uh, sensors for iso so you can either shoot in a range of 100 to 1000 and in post you can change it anywhere in there or 1250 to 6400 change it anywhere from in there and then you're really higher up stuff so you can't change so all the way up to 25,600. So it looks like on Canon raw light, you have to make sure that whatever ISO you choose, you get it perfect. Now in the same article, they talked about uh, filming a actual commercial production and the DP basically said he left it at ISO the entire time and got a really clean image out of it. So I suspect that most people are probably just gonna set it at 800 and then Again, if you're on professional sets, you're probably just gonna adapt everything else around that sensor. But I don't know, it still feels a little weird that a $16,000 camera and it's it's raw light. Anyway, I always love playing with the highlight slider to see what sort of recovery, not only recovery, but definition. I mean, it really brings down the whole image and maybe depending on what sort of cameras you've used, that may seem like a duh thing. But for example, on my old Blackmagic, which had like the greatest recovery, when you pulled that recovery slider down, it almost kept the shadows and midtones totally intact. For example, if I were to capture this shot with my old Blackmagic, what would happen is the sky and the clouds would become really defined and much uh, richer while not really darkening or messing too much with the overall image around because I can drop the highlights and then let's say if I bring up the shadows, yeah, it kind of just looks like it's back to the raw look essentially. Throw this LUT on it. This likes to 
push things quite a bit. I'm gonna try my technique of pulling down the highlights. There we go, okay. That definitely brought back some nice definition here. Yeah, in terms of like a really contrasty, but like just kind of punchy image, this is definitely what I was going for here. And uh, yeah, I mean, everyone knows Canon colors just look beautiful, so. All right, so now let's look at some of this ProRes. Now, why did they shoot ProRes? Uh, fun fact for those of you who don't know, because I didn't a number of months ago and was educated on it, is if you're shooting in really low light scenarios, sometimes raw is not the best way to go because it's gonna be extremely noisy. Now I know what you're thinking. Why not have all the data of raw and then just add some noise reduction? Uh, as long as your camera's pretty good at it and you know every camera's different, um, but a lot of times if you're shooting, especially in ProRes, ProRes will actually look better through its like debayering process and just whatever process it does in camera, or oftentimes will look better than raw plus denoiser. This was shot at 50 FPS, so it got a little bit of slow motion. It's not 12 bit raw, so now it's 10 bit ProRes. That is a clean image, especially this one right here. Wow. Yeah, so even on these shots, we can see that there's great dynamic range and I'm sure that I can easily make a pretty decent look out of this. Now I even have these RGB LUTs, uh, which have Canon color correction. Let's go with the universal, because I don't really know indoor, outdoor. And then I'm not a fan of super warm shots. As I play this back, the noise is definitely more relevant in this uh, windowsill. So personally, if this was uh, something I was actually editing, I would definitely be adding a touch of denoiser. There we go. Now these Canon color corrector LUTs actually are really coming in handy for this to kind of give me a base look. Obviously I can push things a lot further, bring things back, but I'm definitely happy with just the light touches. They're definitely not overdoing anything but they're acting as just a really nice kind of base as I kind of play around with the footage. So I'll definitely link uh, RGB LUTs in their LUT packs down in the description below. These shots right here are so clean. That's in, This is probably the cleanest low light footage and best like dynamic range of, wow. I, I literally think this clip is the best low light clip I've ever seen because I think it's actually very difficult because as much as these other ones, which are, you know, wide, they have a little bit of noise, things like that. Here you have something that is essentially top lit. And so you have a pretty bright source right here, which you can see reflecting off the nose and part of the instrument, but it's exposed properly still. And then right before it starts to fade out here, we still have, you know, these hot spots, which are perfectly still all in our scopes and everything then even the shadows, which should be very black. I mean, we can see that it's not like there's a giant whiteboard in front of him that's bouncing light back into his face. Maybe they added one. Maybe someone's holding a bounce or something in front of him. I don't think so. It looks about the same shadows or so. So I want to see what's possible with this image real quick. Seeing immediately, I'm finding an annoyance with uh, not being in raw. I'm so used to being able to change the color temperature, which obviously in a non raw You can still adjust the color temperature, but you'll notice here that when I'm shifting it to more cool It's almost like adding a blue Cooler tone mask on top of a warm shot rather than changing the actual True color temperature of the image, you know, it's going to take a lot more work to make this not look like such a warm image. So here's where I kind of ended up with the clip without spending more than honestly five or so minutes on it. So I personally wouldn't have shot it at a daylight white balance, but hey, that's what they were going for. As a warm scene, this I'm sure would look amazing. But just so you guys can see, that's what the raw looked like. And that's what uh, I kind of ended up with a little bit more gritty, almost looks like a war movie type thing going. Um, the only big standout thing besides trying to make it cooler um, is I added a tracked mask um, just to his face to brighten it up since it was pretty dark. All right, and this will probably be the last clip we look at here. The other ones are pretty similar.
All right, so that's what the white balance checker. I think the tint was ever so slightly off. Ooh, yes. This is the cool look that I was going for. And again, these images are so clean. There is very minimal noise. Incredible. Yeah, guys, so that was it. That's me checking out a couple clips from the Canon C500 Mark II. What do you guys think about this camera? Would you pay $16,000 for it? And obviously, I know the cost goes into way more than just editing the footage. You have the, you know, built-in NDs, the actual body, the use case, and stuff like that. So I'm not saying that it's not worth the 16K just because you know, it wasn't the greatest footage to work with in post-production. But to summarize my first impressions, definitely it has nice Canon colors. Everything is very like soft, if that makes sense. The thing about not having full raw controls, especially with ISO and white balance, if you're shooting in ProRes, is you really just don't have as much control of your look in uh, post-production and so if you're in a scene where you can control your environment and so say if you want your scene to look cool um, and so you get very cool toned set you know you build a cool tone set essentially then you're going to be great canon's going to give you fantastic colors and you're probably going to have a great experience but i think i definitely got spoiled the other day playing around with the re uh, 65 footage because yeah this definitely isn't just you know do one or two corrections and it automatically looks beautiful and again all the links to the sample footage the LUTs that I'm using to correct these are all down in the description so make sure you check that out and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you got something out of this video and I'll see you guys in the next one